Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. How are you today? Today in the studio, I want to do some experiment with cold press paper versus hot press paper. This is a painting I did for this month's Patreon. So if you are a patron that is signed up to a tier where you receive a original painting, this is what you're going to be getting in the post next month. And I'm really, really happy with it. It was a concept of doing lots and lots and lots of layers. I think there's about 10 layers on this painting of very transparent layers with the quinacridon rose and then the neutralized quinacridon rose. I neutralized it with Hook of the Green to make this painting. And I love the ghostliness of it. But if I am to be picky, there's two things I want to tweak for a bigger piece. And one is the line. The line so far is quite jaggedy and that's because it's on cold press paper. I only had cold press paper both in terms of the bucket foot that I do the patron paintings in as well as the archers one. I also did a bigger study piece like this and again this suffers from jagged edges. See there? That's not what I'm wanting. I'm wanting nice crisp edges and that's purely because it's on cold press paper I think. So I've ordered some archers hot press paper and I prepared a test study piece with three squares because I also want to see how this design looks in a group. And ultimately, I have this idea of doing like a three by three painting of like three of this in three rows as a big square. And I just want to see, since I'm doing a little testing thing, how it will look with just the first row. The other issue that I would love to solve is these, and these just are from where the paint seeped in under the masking tape. And I think it's fine when it's an individual painting like this, but if I want to do like a group piece of nine of these, I want the borders that will be the, this bit to be nice and clear. And I'm going to try using the good old Holbein masking fluid. I'm just gonna run it across along the masking tape line. I wanna see A, if I can get a nice crisp line, B, if it's gonna stop the thing, this seepage from happening. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. So that's the masking bit done and you can see even the masking fluid has seeped under but that's fine because it's the masking fluid. It's a little bit wobbly but I'm hoping that the wobbliness, I don't know, it, I would have preferred a nice crisp edge like we have here because that will really contrast with how organic this is. But we shall see, we, we just have to try and, and play with things. So I'm just gonna let this dry and then we can paint.
so that's the study done. Um, I have to say I'm not happy with the result of the painting itself. If you look at this, this was way more crisp in the lines and it was just much better than this. This is just a mess. This is Archer's hot press paper and I find it very unforgiving. It's very difficult to keep an even wash and I really don't know why there's more of these wobbly lines rather than the nice crisp line on this paper than on this paper. So maybe this isn't the paper to go for and I kind of feel like, oh, it's a failure. But I have learned two really awesome things. One is that when I was painting this painting, I was like, oh, am I using two darker layers? Like, is each layer too dark? But actually having it about this strong is way better than having it too weak because then you get to see the layers nice and clearly. The other thing is, although I have a lot more to learn in how to use it, the masking fluid along the edge of the masking tape worked really well. There's one place where it seeped just a tiny bit here, but that's a lot less than what I was having before. And you do get relatively nice crisp edge. And to be honest, the little unevenness, the tiny, tiny unevenness, I don't mind because this is watercolor. This is supposed to be more organic rather than say computer generated printed piece of art. As far as does this design work in a group? I'm not quite sure at the moment. Even if I get this right, like this, I don't know, I feel a little bit retro in design and it doesn't really speak to me as a person. It might speak to someone else. I like the individual painting on its own when it's just like this, but do I like it like this and in more numerous group? I don't think I would, but I'm glad I did this because then I only had to do three paintings <laughs> that turned out bad rather than nine and it still turned out bad, which will be triple the amount of time required. Maybe I want to look at enlarging this design on its own instead, rather than trying to do multiples of a small size. So maybe that's where I will take this series next. I hope you enjoyed today's painting session. Thank you so much for being in the studio with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye.